All right, we're doing a live co coaching session with Goth GF. This is Diamond 3 on Coliseo on PC, I believe, um, for Ana and Baptiste. Uh, I play a lot of Baptiste and Ana. I'm looking for advice on positioning and what I should be doing to reach masters. I'm at a loss of what skills or what I am lacking to take me to the next milestone. I've been hard stuck around Diamond 2 to Plat 1 for the past month or so. I played since Overwatch 1, but didn't start taking comp seriously until about Season 2 of Overwatch 2. So, um, haven't really seen the game, so the game's gonna be a pretty close one, you're gonna win uh, the last fight in overtime at the end of the end of the game. And you play Ana for like two-thirds of the game, two-thirds, three-quarters of the game, and then uh, Baptiste at the very end. So, I'll give you some highlights to what kind of stuck out to me. Number one, I think your Ana play looks really good. Um, I'm actually like very, like, was really pleasantly surprised at like lots of times where I feel like um, there's like you make really good plays, you get really good picks, um, you're pretty good re reaction time overall. I think your positioning in general is 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 good like it, there's only like a couple i wouldn't say positional issues i think there's sometimes where you kind of like abandon a fight where you really should have stayed and either died or try to try to flip it um but i think overall i think your anna played looked really really good i think that your baptiste play looks worse which is what's interesting because i think you mentioned the fact that you're actually more of a baptiste main and you started playing on it more recently i think your baptiste play looks weaker um it feels like you don't weave very much and it feels like you're more panicked on Baptiste than you are on Ana, which I think is, again, really interesting since if you have more hours on Baptiste. I'd be curious what your win rates are between the two heroes. Um, but that's kind of what stuck out from Baptiste. I think the overarching theme of this game is the enemy Sombra, like, significantly impacts this game a lot. So the enemy Sombra is, like, crazy aggressive, and she commits for kills basically every single time she enters. So she goes in, commits for kill, sometimes gets away, sometimes dies. She dies, like, a lot still, but she pretty much gets killed every single time. And I think one of the lessons walking away from this game is how do I deal with Sombra, especially a Sombra who's not targeting you, but instead targeting your DPS, and, like, how do you play around that? So I think that's going to be a, a big overarching theme here. And the rest will just be, like, minor notes around, like, oh, you could have played this better differently, you know, you could play this differently... Little, little things like that. Does that make sense? Sure, yeah. Yeah, okay. Do you have any questions before we start? Uh, no questions, no. Okay. So right now, 15 seconds into the, into the game, we're started. By the way, right now is a point where you could hit scoreboard and check the enemy uh, lineup, which could be really important, because, for example, if there's a Widow that's going to peek right here, you might be dead immediately. <laughs> so you should, like... Be a little careful here when you when you take this corner peek because if you die right now you've just immediately given up a fight and that can be very very problematic and widows are very, very common on this map playing this angle because it's such a long angle so just something to think of is just like hitting the scoreboard and confirming what they are and peeking a little bit late that being said you come out here you tag the uh cassidy right away somebody else hits him as well that obviously not all damage from you and then he ends up dying the kill feed sometimes is misleading as to who gets assist credit but you get a kill here, really good, right? So we're already on track here. It's good. You came out aggressively. You knew your team didn't need healing. Excellent. Unfortunately, we have Sombra, and then she's and she's gonna get the kill. So you could have gotten the save here. I think that would be very difficult to get the save. So you heard the hack. You turn almost right away. I think that your first thing should have been throwing a grenade right away to try to get the heal in. But like all in all, I still don't consider this like a mistake. I think this is like. At GM, maybe you make this play, but I think below GM, I don't think Anana consistently makes this play for how quick it is. However, if you'd known that there was a Sombra in the game, I would have expected you to do it. So for example, if you check scoreboard either before you peeked or after you got the kill, because right now this is kind of like a, uh, like a dead moment, right? So one of the important things in Overwatch is to understand what is the current pace of play? Are we playing very fast? Are we playing very slow? Right now it's slow, right? We got a kill, their team is gonna be backing up, like everyone's full health. I have time to think and analyze. And this is a moment where I'm constantly hitting my, like, I, through the game, I literally hit, hit the scoreboard button like 200 times in the game because I'm always checking the scoreboard to figure out like, what do they have? What do they rotate to? What's our ult status? Like, is anybody popping off in the enemy team I need to worry about? So I'm hitting it all the time. So right now I'd already be hitting the scoreboard and I would have noted, number one, where is a DPS? Because all I've seen so far is I saw the Zen, I saw the Cassidy, I think you maybe saw the tank as well. Um, and then I'd be like, wait, there's definitely somebody missing. Like, we're winning the fight too easily. So either there's somebody who's AFK. So it could, for example, be a Widow who has spawned late and is about to peek and then shoot me, right, from, like, down here. That I have to worry about. Or it could be a flanker that I haven't heard or seen. So it could be, like, a, you know, a flanking Genji or Tracer or Echo or Sombra. So I'm immediately thinking, hey, where's the last member of their team? 
Like, I feel good about the pick, but on the other hand, I, you know, I don't want to get complacent here. And I think that will kind of help you instead of making this purely a reactive play. Like, oh, there's a Sombra. I try to try to save. That's really hard. But if I think, hey, there's somebody missing. I check the scoreboard. I realize right now there's a Sombra in the game. What do I do? I immediately turn around because I assume the Sombra is going to attack. Basically, every Sombra in this game is going to attack or every flanker in this in this map on this point is going to attack from one of these three doorways. Right? Virtually every single one is going to attack from one of these three at the start of the game because they don't have time to rotate to anywhere else. Like, the Sombra couldn't have gotten here, for example. So I'd immediately turn already and be like, hmm, what's going on? And then I would see this and I would get the save. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, one thing that's going to be really important as you approach, again, higher ranks is being able to predict the way we'll, the game will play out. I think you do pretty well at the limit of what is kind of possible reactively. Right? I think you do a pretty good job reacting to like, oh, this is a certain circumstance. But the problem is reacting only gets you so far, but being proactive, thinking through what could happen is really important. And you already probably have some idea of that in terms of dealing with ultimates. So for example, if the enemy Reinhardt, if there's enemy Reinhardt and you know they have Shatter, you're probably already thinking, I'm gonna play near a wall or I'm gonna play far away. That's predicting what is gonna happen. That way you don't have to try to reactively dodge the Shatter, which sometimes is literally impossible. So, Sombra gets a kill here. We're gonna flush her out. She's gonna go. Um, a note here is I can already tell that she's going to escape. So do you play Sombra at all or DPS? Uh, but no, I don't. Okay. Yep, so that's fine. So this goes back into trying to understand, learn more about the game. So from the DPS's perspective, okay, Sombra's going in here. Sombra's coming in, you know, wants to get a kill here. She sees the, the Widow is hard scoped, hits Virus, mm -hmm. right, shoots her in the head. Has some trouble aiming, but gets the kill. What do you think the, the Sombra is thinking right now? Full, full health, right? I would think she'd get some ship damage in and then, like, translocate out, right? Yes. So she's probably not expecting to get any kills here, right? So she's going to leave very, very soon. But since she's full health and she's a god ammo, she might try to, as you mentioned, get some ship damage. I think that's fair. And she tries shooting a little bit, but as soon as you tag her, what do you think she's thinking? Because she's tagged once already. Yeah, get out and um, translocate, right? Exactly. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is because there's no need to throw a grenade right now. See? Like, I already read that she's going to end up jumping out of here because I've already tagged her once. If she doesn't translocate right away, the fact that I can do one dart in a grenade, which will kill her within, like, 0.3 seconds or so, is a really tough timing. So I already expect her to be leaving. So you throw the grenade after she's already translocated. And that's something that to think about in the future is... Sometimes I don't actually need to throw the grenade, and saving the grenade is a big deal because the grenade is on such a long cooldown, right? You've got 12 seconds until it comes out again, and then that could be a difference maker in a fight, right? Like, imagine that this is obviously a fight that you've pretty much already won, but if this doesn't happen here, you might feel like, okay, I forced the, the Sombra out with one dart hit, and now I go back in, I throw a grenade at the enemy tank or whatever to try to flip the fight. So we're always looking to maximize value here. That's option number one. Option number two is actually to chase the Sombra, because you saw her translocate angle. There's not a lot of room in this... Uh, room in this room, space in this room for her to dodge you, you could swing in right now and just chuck a grenade to the ground and try to get the kill. It's something to think about. Because if she goes in here, most likely she's headed towards that mini. So if you swing in, right, either try to throw it early or run up here and then throw it somewhere, you know, somewhere in this area, you might get a pick out of this as well. Just something to note. I think it's okay that you disengage here. I'm just noting that, like, there was another world where you could also just try and continue and pursue the kill. So, Sombra out again, good sleep, right? So as soon as we do the sleep, I see that my soldier is sh shooting. I want to shoot the, the Sombra as well to try to get the kill here. Because Sombra gets all the way down to 30 health uh, and then gets away. But her translocate's bad and she's going to die. The enemy Sombra is both good and bad. Like, it, it, it's funny because she's actually quite consistent at getting kills, but she also dies a ton this game. I don't think she gets that many more kills than she dies. So, Zed ends up in a weird spot here. How does he get there? What the heck? Oh man. Okay. So to be fair, everyone is like not paying attention to him because the he he, he flanks right now. So I understand, and you're not gonna hear the footsteps, so you wouldn't notice this right now. So right there, you heard the 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 hello, right? So now you should turn, which you don't. So like, you, can you hear it on the replay right now? Yeah, I can hear it in the replay. Yeah. I just I I think I was still processing, and you're right. I. I I neglect to look at the scoreboard to see like who the enemies are until like I see them visually, right? Yep. Another thing is the scoreboard will tell you who's alive and who's dead too. Fair, yeah. So 
uh, despite the fact that you heard the voice line and it's heard and you see the Zen right now <laughs> on your screen, right on the left side of the screen, waving hello, and then you keep going. And now the Zen's going after Kiriko. You throw a grenade and you duck instinctively, and he's going to kill the Kiriko here, and then I think he's going to die after this. So, replaying this, obviously you had a lot of ample warning to know that the Zen was here. But beyond that, I want to note right now, the correct reaction at this moment in time is to heal your Kiriko if she's in any danger of dying, so like roughly, you know, 120-ish and below. Heal her, and then kill the Zen, right? And then heal the, the Kiriko, throw a grenade at either one, it doesn't really matter. But the number one priority here is, is heal the Kiriko. In 2v1 situations with a support plus squishy against the squishy, almost always the right call for supports is to heal the, their, their friendly support. Because it's almost impossible for one hero to kill a pocketed target, especially for Ana, who is like the highest single target healer in the game without cooldowns. So, like, you can guarantee the Zen never kills the Kiriko by simply hard focusing the, the Kiriko and pocketing her, and she definitely doesn't die. That's number one. Number two, the more optimal way to do this is to make sure the Kiriko doesn't die and then also put damage on the Zen. That way, the, the Zen that dies faster and the Kiriko doesn't die. That's number two. Point number three here is you feel like you're in danger, so you see how you're going to like take cover here for a second, right? Then you throw a grenade, and then you take cover again. You're not shooting any darts right now, and your Kiriko is going to end up dying. So there's like a lot of optimization in terms of how you react here to the, to the 2v1 situation, but also like your own personal like fear factor where you're like, oh god, this is Zen flanking, I'm in danger. But the Zen is very clearly not attacking you, right? She's, he's attacking the, the Kiriko the whole time, and you have to read that and be like, as long as he's attacking the Kiriko, I'm effectively safe. Like, you could probably stand still right now and you'd be fine. Because the Zen's definitely going to be hard-focused and killing the Kiriko. Does that click? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so... Yeah, I would definitely make sure to kill the Zen. I, when I see the Soldier slide over, I know the Soldier coming to kill the Zen. So I want to make sure... Look, there's a, there's a chance that the Soldier could lose against the Zen, right? Zen it's going to get healed up and Zen has charged Valley. He could kill the, the soldier. So I walk up here and make sure that I confirm the kill. Like your Orisa's is fine. Like you can definitely leave her alone for five, 10 seconds. I'd make sure to kill the Zen right now. Yeah. See, it actually gets pretty close. <laughs> you almost actually nearly kills the soldier. Okay. So the support dance tanks walk forwards. I walk forwards. There's no real reason to be playing this far back. Again, if, if like the team dies up here, you actually want to die here. You actually don't really want to stay alive because you don't want to get staggered, which is what's going to happen to you later. So I would actually play up here versus all the way back. Because think about it. At some point in time, your Orisa might be like, oh, there's a, somebody gets low, there's a kill opportunity, and then she spins through. And when she spins through, it's going to take you like 10 seconds to be able to see her again. Versus if you play up here, she might only break line of sight for like two to four seconds. And that's a huge difference in Overwatch. So... I know that you're safer back here. Objectively, you are much safer back here. But you also need to recognize the farther back you are, the less impact you can have on a fight. So playing closer gives you more impact. It trades safety for value. And I think that's a good concept for supports in general, is if you maximize your safety too much, you lose your ability to influence the game. So for example, right? let's do an extreme example. If you play all the way back here, I'm sure you'll realize there's like no way you could possibly die. However, you have very little way to impact the fight, because even if you throw an on-target grenade or sleep, it takes so long to get there, they might not even be there anymore. Or if the Orisa turns the corner, or if they like walk behind the, the robot, or anything happens, you just can't do anything from that far back. So, that, I, I think that as you start climbing and you're like, look, I'm having trouble swinging games, try to play closer than you necessarily feel super comfortable with, in exchange for being able to do more to change fights. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. All right, so over here, pocket the soldier. Yep, this is the right call. Right again, a two v one situation. Just pocket the, the whoever's being targeted, and you're good. Right, obviously you're the one being targeted. Focus on dodging. Miss a couple darts here. So this is actually weirdly enough, kind of a moment that I want to highlight. So you're gonna miss two darts here, I think. Right, so we saw the first one missed. That second one missed. Yeah, we can see the dart against the wall. So one, two, and then you're gonna throw a grenade. I think this is a really bad habit. <laughs> um, obviously, the best scenario is to hit the darts, but you're not always going to hit the darts. But the problem is if you throw grenades at teammates, that's like one of your biggest abilities, arguably your most important ability, arguably the strongest ability in the game that's not an ultimate. Um, so don't use grenade to heal people as a crutch. It's very, very common to see like 
lower ranked Annas be like, oh, I'm having trouble hitting like a Genji or a Tracer, and they're like, oh, screw this, and they just throw a grenade. It's a really, really bad habit. I actually think it's better to lose games from not throwing grenades at teammates than it is to throw grenades at teammates, because then you won't force yourself to get better. Because you truly cannot waste grenades like this at higher ranks. Like, every single grenade in a fight is tracked by the enemy. Like, once you start hitting, like, because, you know, you're, you're on the borderline of Masters right now. Like, like Diamond 3, you said you're Diamond 2 in the past. When you hit Masters, everybody knows when you have grenade. And everybody tracks every grenade that's thrown. Every single hero on the opposing team, every hero on your team will all be thinking, where is Ana's grenade? <laughs> Does she have it? Has she thrown it? Who did it hit? And they will play accordingly. So if the enemy team hears or sees you throw a grenade right now, if I'm the opposing tank, for example, I'm like, oh, I don't have a grenade, I'm going to run over your tank now, because you can't stop me without grenade. Same thing for, like, you know, if I'm Genji over here, I'm like, oh, I, saw, I see you waste grenade, now I can dive you, because you have no way to stop, to, like, heal yourself, burst damage me, save your teammates, stop me from getting healed, etc. So something as small as this is, like, very, very problematic in terms of, like, it limits your ceiling for skill growth. Obviously, number one is hit the, hit the heal darts. It's, you know, soldiers walking behind, backwards on a straight line. It shouldn't be that hard. But even if you miss the darts, just keep going for the heal. It's different if the soldier's under pressure. If there's a Genji here, yeah, go ahead, throw the grenade, right? Obviously, the soldier's in great, grave danger of dying. But in this situation, where the soldier's really far back, try to train yourself not to throw that grenade and just be like, I'm going to land the heal. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so soldier's healed up. We do have to think about maybe stepping forward a little bit, but I think right now we are okay. The good thing is that like, Garisa is like a super, super durable tank. If she's someone like a Junker Queen or a Zarya, she's actually in grave danger right now of dying. But Arisa's is super tanky, so less likely she will die. But I want to be moving up right now. But Soldier engages. I will note, so we hear the Sombra start shooting right now, right? I just heard it in my left ear. So, you know, you go for the Ana shot, you turn, and he's going to get the kill. Um... How much is this your responsibility? I would say minimal. I think I think you definitely could have swung faster. I think in Masters, an Ana probably swings in time to see this and would have thrown a grenade to save. So I, I think a Masters on it, like that's enough time, like playing it in real time now. I, I think a Masters, Masters on it would have gotten this heal in. Right, right now, snap, snap, grenade, yeah. I think a Masters on it probably gets this. So like just a little faster reaction time, but especially knowing there's a Sombra in the game is important, right? Because I'm always thinking, hey, like what's going on in my backline? Where is the Sombra? Because one of the tough things about playing on Sombra is like the, the stealth flanker Sombra style, which is very common, is she gives you a deceptive sense of progress, right? Because it can feel like, hey, we're pushing over their front line, things are good, and you get complacent. And the reason it's happening is because it's actually a five on four until the Sombra engages. So you might think, hey, like, we're good, like, I just focus on the front and I'm fine, but then the Sombra sneaks up and kills you or kills a teammate or whatever it is, and all of a sudden it's evened up again. So that's something to always think about with Sombra is like, look, any progress I'm making in the front could be fake until the Sombra engages and we either deal with her or kill her or whatever ends up happening. So this is a good example of, like, you're playing way too far back from your Risa. As I mentioned, like, I would have been much further up than, than, than you were. Luckily, your Arisa is a boss, and has somehow, despite being fighting like a 3v1 out there, has not only survived, but also gotten a kill. Moments like this, I don't think you should scope. Just unscope, that way you can move up, because scoping slows you down. I would never walk this area without looking to the right, because you don't know like if there's a Widow or Hanzo or somebody else with Ash out here who could potentially kill you. So, especially since everyone's full health, I'm turning this way as I swing to make sure that no one's, no one's scoped in on me. Alright, so this is all pretty regular. Yeah, take some pot shots. You're, you're near Nano right now. I will note one thing on your aim. So my my read here is that your aim is your sensitivity is probably too high, which is not saying that you should necessarily change it. That is entirely up to you and it's a personal thing. But basically every miss you have is because you over aim. So we see right here, you're going for the the Junker Queen, it's off to the right. Uh, and then you're you're back on target. We're gonna see later on, but just noting that we're gonna see like the over flicks happen a few times. So you just saw Sombra, I think, teleport back here. Obviously, yeah, see, right there? Like, you see the flash? So you should know, okay, the Sombra's over here. Okay, you see it too. Okay, good. So just be aware. Like, look, there is a Sombra in the back line, and I, that's something I'm going to deal with. So you might try to save Grenade here too. If you're not taking a lot of damage in front, save Grenade, which is really strong at dealing with flankers. So you're going to go for a Sleep Dart right now. I think trying to interrupt Axe, but you'll see that the Sleep Dart is quite a bit off, which is what I mean by over-aiming. 
and we're gonna we're gonna see it more later. I think that sleep dart was probably okay, but as a note, what I'm thinking about positioning right now. So you go to the left because you're trying to maintain LOS on your Risa, and I and I get that. But number one is your Risa is not in danger at all, right? First of all, she's full health. Second of all, she's Risa, and third of all, she's in Fortify. So there's like impossible for Risa to die right now. What I'm thinking here which is different than you, is you're thinking, I need to make sure my tank lives. I'm thinking, where's the Sombra? Because I know the Sombra's back here. I know the Sombra has to engage soon, otherwise we're going to lose, because like obviously we're winning default right now. The Jugger Queen's getting absolutely wrecked by the Orisa. So my goal is, hey, what's actually happening back here and being ready to immediately help against the Sombra? I also might be trying to take shots against the Zen or the Cassidy or the Ana up here, but the lowest priority at this moment in time is healing the Orisa. Like that, she like definitely doesn't need any help here for at least five seconds, but arguably ten plus seconds at this moment in time. So just look for better value things. And I probably don't want to step out here. I probably want to stay here, right, and take shots. And as soon as Sombra engages, I immediately nade, right, and then force her off, and then go back to whatever I was doing. Go to that. Yeah. Okay. So you go ahead and grade the the Junker Queen. She's lowish, so like uh, I get it. Um, you can hear Sombra in the back line, but at this point, you're too far away to really do anything. So I'm looking, okay, what's what's where's my value here? So option number one, I swing this way, and I help kill a Junker Queen. Option two, I shoot the Cassidy, which is okay, right? Uh, option three is I swing here and actually shoot the Ana, which I think is actually reasonably good value, but also dangerous for you. Option four is I back up. So this is kind of a tough moment, because I think... The best option would be able to kill the Junker Queen right now, because she is purple, so none of, the, none of the healing is going to matter. The problem is there's no other damage coming out except for your Orisa, because the Sombra's in your back line. Uh, another option is shooting the Cassidy. The problem is if you start scoping, the Cassidy is actually really good at being able to pick you off. He could two-shot you from this range, and the Ana's got Shout, so not particularly good. So I think retreating here is okay, but the problem is that means you wasted the grenade. So that causes us to now rewind backwards and think, was this actually a good grenade that I threw if there's no follow-up on it? tricky. I would say right now, she's pretty tanky. I think the grenade's okay. I think that all of this is probably in the category of like 0 to 100% optimal. This is like 80% optimal. Like in most scenarios, this ends up being okay. In this particular scenario, because the Sombra was back here, I think you need to slow down, deal with the Sombra first, and then throw the grenade after that, or use the grenade on the Sombra. So, it's tricky, right? But I think that piling together, like prioritizing, like what are the activities you need to be doing is helpful as a framework of thinking through fights. I think your priority there, number one, was deal with the Sombra because your Orisa's not low. If Orisa was low, then saving Orisa's priority number one. But with Orisa not being low, I think priority one is deal with the Sombra, then deal with whatever's in front of me. That way we could all focus down and burn the Junker Queen down. By the way, of course, interrupt me if you have any questions, thoughts, etc. You know, any, any, any time. Uh, I think there's a lucky dart on the Sombra. I don't Absolutely. Think... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you missed the Orisa. <laughs> but we'll take it. Okay. So the Zen, everyone in the enemy team is like hyper aggressive. I, I would note that one of the things I've, I've already picked up from the Sombra from just like a couple fights is the Sombra has no real sense of timing. Like she's going to get into the back line and then she's going in pretty much right away. So if you think of it that way, like, hey, look, does the Sombra actually, like, does she lurk or is she just getting to the back line and attacking as soon as possible. Knowing that she attacks as soon as possible makes it easy to deflect her and then win the fight. If she lurks, then she gains value by you just looking for her, and that's tougher to deal with at higher ranks. But at this level, it feels like she basically attacks like off cooldown, so to speak. Anyway, the Zen's going to drop down from, I assume, high ground and start chasing you over here. So you heard the shot right now. So I heard, hear the shot and hear the, the Discord, obviously. So you're going to start strafing. You get super low here. Kiriko does a good save. And at this moment in time, this is all about dueling mechanics. Okay? So I understand the Zen is probably going to hard commit to me because of how low that I got. And so he's going to swing the corner and try to attack me. The problem is that my right side is also open right here. So yeah, my, perspe okay. my perspective here is to use this wall to try to buy myself as much time as I possibly can and then jump at the last second when he is about to die slash I am about to die. <laughs> That's pretty much all you can do here, because if you step backwards, I can virtually guarantee that you will die. If you step forwards, you're probably going to die. So, but this, even like this much cover can make a difference in terms of him being able to hit you. But swinging out wide right now is probably a bad idea. Though he does whiff after that. Yeah, oh my god, is he going to get away with this? So, yeah. Coming out here, so walking into him made that headshot really easy. 
see, this is a good example when the, when, I, when in a 2v1 situation, all Kiriko has to do is heal you here. If Kiriko just pockets you, there's no way the Zen can kill you. <laughs> so, yeah. Tough, right? Obviously, very weird play for the Zen to, to drop down there. Super unusual, but... Um, it's also a good example where, like, if you had Grenade, this is an easy fight win, right? You both survive and you kill the Zen. Yeah. Very unusual play. Alright, we're pushing up right now. Yep, Summer's on you right away. Yeah, good reaction time. You're looking for the grenade. Uh, hack lasts one and a half seconds, so don't worry about throwing it too early. She's probably going to shoot, you know, you know, about a second worth of shots. So just focus on dodging. All right. And you throw a grenade. I think that grenade there is okay. Like, you're reasonably low after that. So, Soldier and Pops overclock. We know the, so the Sombra is dead, right? Hopefully you're looking at kill feed. You know the Sombra is dead right now. So, we're pushing. And also, I recognize that the team is split. Because I have not seen... So, I've seen the Junker Queen. I've seen the Sombra. I have not seen any of the supports. And if we were actually playing this back earlier, you should have known that the Cassidy and the Ana are dead. So, let's play this back to when you died. So in real time, I'm always looking at the kill feed, right? Because like, I have nothing else to do right now. Okay, so we traded. So I know the Zen is dead. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Right. Okay, now I see Cassidy's dead. I see my tank is dead. So I know, look, we killed the Zen and we killed uh, the Cassidy, right? And because they're moving the robot, they're moving further from their spawn, but closer to our spawn. So I know that I have three people here, plus myself is four. I know two people are missing from their team. So this is going to be a four on three, ideally. So my perspective right now is four and three. Now I see Widow kills Ana, so I know this is going to be a four on two. So I already think, hey, we're probably going to win this fight. I probably don't need to do anything here, really, like beyond the usual. Okay, here's Sombra. Okay, we go through the fight. That's fine. Grenade. Now Sombra's dead. So now I'm thinking this is a four on one. You see how I'm like tracking down from the top, right? Of like how many heroes are alive. So this is a four and one, overclock gets popped. I would be like, why is overclock being popped? I don't think there's anybody here to even kill, which is correct. All the only person here is the Joker Queen. And I definitely do not pop Nano here. I don't know if you've seen my recent Ana videos where I talk about this. There's another one I did for another, I think a diamond Ana player, where I talk through that you can get to, you can get the diamond as Ana by automatically nanoing teammates when they pop ulti, right? DPS or tanks, you just nano automatically. Cause it's usually a good play. The problem is sometimes it's not necessary. Either they made a bad call popping ultimate or their ultimate without nano is already enough to win the fight. I don't actually need to pop top nano. So this is a good example where they made a bad play here by popping overclock. There's literally nobody to kill right now except for Junker Queen. And there's four, of, five of you shooting one Junker Queen. There's no reason to be popping overclock, but you double down on this mistake by now popping nano, which means now you don't have nano for the next fight. Make sense? Yeah. So, Sojourn's trying to do something with it, still manages to get a kill on Zen, which is great. This is a good example when people need to understand when to back up or just die. Pushing forward, it's all regular. So, stuff's happening up there, but you're not really going to get angle. You try, I mean, that's actually, I think you get it, get heals here, you save your Widow, good. So, it's either you or the Kiriko on cart. I wouldn't throw a grenade right now, because you don't actually know what's there, and this is a big cooldown to waste. You managed to hit the Sombra on it, luckily. Uh, no, the the Widowmaker ult was still up. I could see the Sombra. Oh, that's what it is. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, okay. I still don't know if I love that play because there's no reason for the Sombra to die here, right? Even if you hit her, unless she's super low. But you might you might know. I mean, it's like it's an okay risk. I personally wouldn't take. I'm like generally a risk averse person. Like I have a very calibrated sense of risk when I'm when I'm playing as all heroes. Is I'm not taking a risk unless I think the, it's there's gonna be really good value out of this risk. My thought there is even seeing the sombra. Unless I knew the sombra was low, like low enough that I could potentially one shot her, I wouldn't chuck it because I can understand that in the next like five to ten seconds, there's gonna be a major fight here that's gonna be conclusive. You know, this is not like when we're over here. Like, when we're over here pushing the robot, I can chuck a grenade. Who cares? We're not going to have a major fight over here. But once you get over here, you're going to run into a fight somewhere in this area, right? Which is going to be, like, do or die. And not having grenade for the next 12 seconds is very possibly going to cost me the fight. So that's that's what I'm thinking. It's like, even if seeing the Sombra there, I don't think I throw the grenade. All right. So it's either you or Kiriko moving the cart. Um, honestly, either one is fine. She goes up. That's good. 
So EMP gets popped. There's really nothing you can do here. Like your your job is to move the cart. This is totally fine, right? You sleep her right away. Really good sleep, right? She's nanoed. So what I'm thinking right now is I must immediately join my team up here because if I stay down here, I'm gonna die anyway. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna die regardless. Like I'm pretty sure there's no way I'm actually gonna live here. So what I think is I wanna get as much value as I possibly can. The problem is running this way probably is gonna take me too long. So I would turn and immediately go up these stairs and see what I can do. Again, you probably die here, right? I would say 90% chance a nano Junker Queen, once I've already slept her, she's gonna kill me. She's gonna shout, she's gonna chase me down, I'm gonna die. But that's fine, as long as I can get some value. I'm already expecting to lose this fight. It's very normal, the flow of the way Colosseal works is that you get the cart to here and then you lose this fight because Defender High Ground is so strong here. That's fine, right? Just think, hey, run up the stairs, get whatever value I can. This is a huge mistake. You're trying to exit the fight right now, but the fight is still ongoing. And what's even worse is the fight's lost, which is expected, but the problem is you aren't gonna get away, which means that you're gonna stagger yourself by like a good 10 to 15 seconds. Right? Again, you die right now, you see that three of your teammates are already spawned, your soldier's trying to get away, which is you know her own mistake if she doesn't manage to get away. Mm -hmm. But now, instead of dying with your team, in which case you'd be up here, you're all the way back there. Which means anything that happens in the next 10 seconds is kind of on you, right? If your teammates get picked before you get there, that's something that you couldn't have influenced because you staggered yourself. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, we're gonna walk up here. <laughs> Somber just goes right away, just immediately nade. Yep, she's crazy. Uh, you a really good kill here, I think, in a second. Yeah, she's gonna teleport over the top at some point. But so I will note. All right, so we killed the Sombra. So pri what's my priority right now? First of all, we saw the Sombra translocate away. I, from my perspective, I think it was clear she's going towards her team. Yeah, so I can see the translocator going this way. So I, she's not gonna be back here. As soon as this happens, like. I can try to shoot her out of the air, which I try to do later. But after that, my priority is my tank. Because I can tell my tank is low, and I think I actually saw her using cooldowns on the way in. Because your tank is making a mistake here. Your tank's gone in way too early. So I I realize my tank needs help. She's stuck in the open. So again, this is a good example where Sleep Dart was like too late. Because I'm thinking, I always think from their perspective, right? What are they going to do? They tried to get the kill right away. They, they got a lot of pressure. They're translocating out right away. I'm not going to have time to land sleep. So. I need to immediately start walking forwards and pocket my Orisa. But you rotating back here, right? See how you're kind of like pausing for a while? I need to like run forwards right now to save the Orisa, because without the Orisa, the fight's over. This rotate to the bridge is safer and gives you better LOS, but you can't get there as quickly as if you just immediately ran down here. Do you get the save? Maybe, maybe not, but I think it's important to teach good good habits, right? The most important thing here is I need to recognize as soon as the Sombra's gone, number one priority, save the Orisa, right? At right now, if you ran down, I guarantee you save the Orisa. But rotating, like looking around for a bit, like being a little slow, you didn't get the dart in there, and then now rotating the bridge guarantees your Orisa dies, which means the fight's lost. All right, we're gonna back up here. We we'll just get hit by Cassidy. Yeah, Cassidy tags you. Okay, good job, yeah, good job going in and cover right away. So, Soldier gets a kill on the Cassidy, good. Obviously, aim here could have been could have been better, but like generally good reaction time. I think she's gonna... Oh yeah, you, you threw a grenade, Niana. I think... One thing that is gonna be a difference between you and Masters and GM is, I think at, at higher ranks, they are much quicker about how quickly they identify the Ana as a vulnerable target. So like the second they see the Ana right here, they immediately throw a nade right now, and then they're scoping right after that to try to double tag her. You're just like a little slow right now, and like you take cover here unnecessarily because Liana's not looking at you, and then now you're finally trying to go for the actual kill. So unfortunate that she dies, and then you tag her here. This is a great kill right there. So soldier low. They cap. You know, not much you can do about this. So I'm thinking right now is I remember the Ana's over here. So if I tag her at all, she has to play much safer. If I don't hit her at all, she can just hard scope here the whole time. But if I tag her even once, she's like afraid that you're gonna peek her. And then she has to play a lot safer, like reduce the angle of where she can possibly see. So even one tag on the Ana is good value. But your soldier did pop overclock, so you have to heal through this. Yep, grenade. Grenade's slightly off target. I think you can see that already. You wanna hit the grenade like here. And I think you're just slightly off and you hit only the, the Junker Queen. 
right? So it's on the opposite side, so the soldier doesn't get the heal. And now soldier's low. I would drop right now. Oh yeah, this is, I remember what happens here. So this is a really important moment. I would drop right now because you have a 3v1 right now with Junker Queen low. I want to commit and get this kill because we don't have a tank right now because our tank died early. So it's really important for us to trade out and get the tank because the tank is way out of position. So I want to literally drop down right now and confirm and get this kill because otherwise she's going to get away. Even right now, I would totally nano the, the soldier to try to confirm this kill at this moment in time because killing the Junker Queen is critically important. But you're playing way too safe right now. You see, you just stay up here, just to get heals. But the moment was tr to try to kill the the Junker Queen. Now you're gonna drop, but it's too late. Zen has rejoined, and the Junker Queen's gotten healed up. As a note here, I'm pretty sure the Ana is getting a lot of healing in. So if you tag the Ana earlier, all right, she reloads. Yeah, so she's, now she's pocketing, goes for sleep. Wow, is it just a Zen that heals everything? Or it's probably um. Self heal, self heal from the Drinker Queen. But I think the, the moment to nano was right now is the nano, because I can see that the soldier is charged and she has overclocked at the moment. So I think right now, nanoing is is a is is the play here to make sure the Drinker Queen dies. But now you drop down late, the team has rejoined, the Ana still out there providing great value. Purple grenade comes in. You actually saw on your screen, but it would have been tough to see. I, I'm definitely not moving forward at this point in time. I already realized I don't think we're gonna win this fight, so I wanna actually like slow down and back out but you go for the sleep rampages in try to stay alive but you're gonna get pinched by both sides i don't think this fight's winnable at this point in time i think pretty much after the junker queen survives right now the second she makes it to the corner i think i think you've lost the fight i think you had to nano earlier uh like when she was charging up for that shot in order to confirm and then go down there and also add in your own damage. And I think the Junker Queen dies and then you can flip this. Does that click? Yeah, that clicks. Okay. So yeah, you're stuck down here, you're gonna die. And then we're gonna go back out. So they built an advantage now. You know the Sombra's in the back, I think. Uh, another note about grenade accuracy. You just, you have to be very careful not to hit your teammates if she tanks with it. Just gotta be a little more accurate with it. I don't know that that feels like a good grenade anyway, unless you're trying to heal your D.Va with it, but I think your D.Va's fine. I don't think D.Va's gonna get d right now. I would probably save that grenade for a better opportunity to hit the Zen and the Junk Queen. Like right now, when I see my D.Va committing, then I would've chucked a grenade against the far wall, for example. Sombra here, yep. All right, you good, good pocket, you're in trouble. Definitely in a tricky situation, try to aim for the sleep. I do a reasonable job getting out of there. But I think you guys start walking forwards right now. Yeah, see, yeah. It's like too tough to be able to do anything from back here. But your diva got demacked. So one of the issues right now is you're in like a lot of panic even when you're actually in reasonable shape. And you also have nano here. You could consider nanoing right now as your diva commits because we know the zen hasn't doesn't have trance because we saw him trance relatively recently so you could nano your diva right now to confirm the zen kill like i would think in my head if i nano diva the zen dies sorry yeah, yeah. if i nano diva the zen, the zen dies here that's guaranteed a pick which is likely enough to win the fight so consider nanoing like high damage tanks like diva roadhog zarya reinhardt like those are great diva tar uh, nano targets low damage tanks like sigma right who are like who's like really really unreliable is not as good Risa also similarly not reliable damage and not as fact that keeps her alive but not as very good at confirming kills but diva point blank against a zen is like a guaranteed kill if you nano in this situation so I think nanoing out there would have been very helpful. But then from there, there's like a little bit of panic. You're actually still in good shape right now. You haven't taken any damage. So you could turn back and be like, oh, hey, what's going on? But you get blown up by the Zen. So understandably, you're taking cover. Cassidy misses you, and then you're back here. But at 182, you kind of take a moment to like reset your mental, right? You go back here, you're like, okay, hey, I'm going to reload. I'm going to think. But I think you need to turn around right away and be like, what do I need to do to influence this fight? See, like this is like a second and a half, two seconds where you're just like sit in garden doing nothing but that's enough time for your diva to get demacked comparatively if you walked over here and you realize hey i reached here my mortar healed me i'm safe and you start walking back in right away maybe you get an angle to nano you don't actually but you might have in other situations so it's something to think about so you're gonna pocket the baby diva out of this but emp goes off we're managed to flip it anyway which is really surprising that's a good good emp but there's just not enough team members here i think to Outdo it. 
Good grenade. Yep. I think that's a really good grenade. It's a good prediction on where she was going to be. I'm going to move the card. All right. Sombra out here. You turn right away. So you decide to hold on to the grenade. It was, this looks like an intentional grenade. Any told? Are you are you waiting for her to push you? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay. So I think this is, I think this is a good call. Obviously, it's a tight call, but like it is a it's a high value call to try to wait their grenade. And now she knows you you have grenade, so it's like much harder for her to win the fight. Yeah. Good 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 hit, grenade hit. Yep. You basically completely peeled her. The problem is your diva got demacked, but there's nothing you can do about that. You're fighting the Sombra. I would note right now is without the diva, very unlikely we're gonna win the fight. So I'm probably just going to stay here and just like fight it out and see what happens. I would not nano here because I don't think Cassidy, because the only nano target here is going to be Cassidy. Cassidy's probably unlikely to kill the Drunk Queen unless she's super low, which she actually is right now, but you wouldn't have known that until right now. So now that I saw this, I'm like, oh, great. Drunk Queen's dead. Now we can win this for sure. So good sleep. Right? Keep people alive. I would have even considered nanoing the, the Mura right now because nanoing means that we're going to push this cart all the way over to the point, most likely. So if I needed to, I would have considered nanoing, but you don't need it because you have a grenade. Right, keep more alive, good. Everything here's good. Right, Cassie's low. Slept. All right, we're still good. Uh, yeah, I think keep pushing here because you know the Ana's trapped in the corner based on her position because you never saw her cross this gap. So I'm pushing this way to make sure she doesn't get away. Ugh. Yeah. All right, park in the Moira. I think you walk up right now. Oh, oh, do you hear the Sombra? Yeah. Oh yeah, you see the translocate and you hear the Sombra, gotcha. So yeah, good idea pushing right here. Yep, grenade. You should have fired a dart first, like mechanically, because uh, grenades and animation cancel. So instinctively, when you hit this, it should have been dart first, immediately throw a nade. Oh, actually, you do. I'm sorry, you do. It's just so quick. Yeah, so you missed the grenade, the dart, but the grenade's on target. All right, Diva did a good, good, good job keeping you alive. How do you feel about this nano? This is a blind nano. I I I just been sitting on nano for so long that I I just I don't know. I, was hoping to confirm the kill, and I should have been paying attention more to the team fight. It... Yeah, I, I think that this is tough because your diva is boostering in, so like you know you want a nano aggression, so that makes sense. But the problem is based on the last piece of information I had was that the you know this is kind of the area, the space that we control. There is a sombra somewhere you know over here who's like retreating, and I saw the ana over here, and everybody else I know is really far away. That's like kind of the information I knew like in my head because in my head I'm always have I have like a bird's eye view of the map in my head like a like a mini map of like where do I think people are and I think all heroes all roles need to have that to some extent. So if I nano or diva right now, I think the only person she can kill here is a sombra, but she doesn't need nano to kill a sombra anyway because I already got her injured and like sombra can't beat diva one v one. So like she's either gonna find the sombra and kill her or she's not gonna find her at all. In which case the nano is not gonna make a difference. The Ana over here is also killable without Nano. Again, if we if she's still out of position, we're going to kill her anyway. And these heroes are way too far away for the D.Va to kill. So I would hold Nano here. I get that you feel like impatient because you're like, oh, I've been holding Nano for a while, but this doesn't feel like a Nano that's like high value to me. Yeah. Yeah, so she basically wastes the entire Nano. There's like nothing for her to do with this. Yeah, she has like a little bit of it at the very end. So Cassie dies, great. I would not be walking forwards right now. So Zen's exposed. I don't have grenade. I think you hold sleep there. So one of the things is I noticed that you sleep tanks a lot. Like you sleep to defend yourself, A. But B, when in the middle of team fights, you sleep the tank or try to sleep the tank a lot. The problem is you should always think, if I sleep here, what's the value that I get? Let's say you do land this sleep in the Junker Queen. You're clearly aiming the Junker Queen. It doesn't really help you, right? The Junker Queen probably gets woken right away because the is like point blank and it's really hard to avoid shooting someone when you're that close. So she probably gets woken right away. Versus if you sleep the Zen here or the Ana, you're effectively stunning them because no one's shooting at them. You're stunning them for the next like four seconds and then you can turn this into a 2v2, 3v2, you know, depends on where the Moira is. And that's, I think, better value than trying to go for the tank right now. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I would say generally try to avoid sleeping the tank when they're being focused, unless the sleep is going to interrupt them somehow. So for example, if Winston's like dives you, you know, zap, 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 and the Winston's diving out, sleep him then. That's great, because if you cancel the jump, virtually guaranteed to be a pick. But in this situation, especially against brawly, durable heroes, the sleep's not going to do anything. All right, trance gets popped. All right, obviously Rampage misses for the most part. Yeah, keep more alive. Good. You look back for the Sombra, I think, which is good, right? 
good grenade in. I think not necessarily something we can follow up right away, but it's still, I think, fine. Like, at minimum, it pushes the Ana back. Yeah, step forward. I'm thinking right now, like, yeah, shooting the Junker Queen, not good value. Look for anybody else. Pocket the Widow, good. Another good example where, like, the sleep here is not good value. I don't know if you're trying to interrupt the Axe Swing, but even if you do, like, it's not really going to make a difference. Like, a Diva's going to push her with the boosters, which will probably wake her up anyway. Um, you let your Widow die here. You have, I think, a couple of shots here. So first shot... Uh, maybe like one and a half, depending on how quickly you're able to acquire. Probably could have saved the Whittle there, but it would be tough. It's hard because I think you're also having trouble deciding like who is main healer and who is off healer, because like, your Moira is like, kind of moving around doing her, her own thing. So I think you're also thinking like you're being taxed because you're like, I need to keep Diva alive, I need to keep Diva alive, but also your backline's being attacked. So I think you're stretched in both directions. Um, grenades on target, pocket the Diva. Unfortunately, still get theme act, right? Junker Queen low though, trade out. Sombra on you. Yep, just a duel. I mean, did the best you could. I, I don't really think that there's anything more you could have done there. I would note that reserving sleep, if we hadn't gone for that sleep, sleep could have saved you right now. Because you've proven that you can definitely hit those close range sleeps. So like a sleep right now could have saved your life and continued this fight, which would have been actually huge because then D.Va would probably get mech back and then you still have two on card. So this is a good example where like holding abilities for like a better opportunity can be like fight changing. All right, so so walk me through the switch to Baptiste. What, what were you thinking? Uh, more for um, just more survivability. It seems like we were getting a lot of deaths from the picks from the Sombra, right? Um, and I'm just a lot more comfortable on that, right? Um, and as the time is going down, I don't want to wait till like the last thirty seconds to switch to Bap if I can make a difference like now, right? Gotcha. So you're thinking use use lamp, use regen burst to try to save teammates. That's, that's like the primary thinking here. Yeah, and then uh, damage to deter confirm kills, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. I think Bap is perfectly fine here. I would just note that I feel like your auto play was actually quite strong, so I was surprised to see you swap the Bap. But I get like your thought process here of like trying to save people. I think the tough thing is often people are not within range of regen burst, uh, and lamp is a very very long cooldown. So throwing it for Sombra can be tricky enough. But all right, we're shooting. All right, you try to poke a little bit, you get dinged up by the cast. Three. Yep. So Sombra's on you. You immediately throw out lamp. So thinking through this, what's the order to use regen burst and lamp in your mind? So, like, in my experience, like, going against Sombras, especially, like, aggressive ones, like, if I regen burst, I usually die, right? Um, so that's why I threw the lamp. Also, I just grabbed the health pack over there. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have the... If I hadn't grabbed the health pack yet, I probably would have gone regen burst and then health pack and then lamp, right? Yep. Uh, but, yeah, that's why I threw the lamp. I'm, like, 103. Yep. So you, yeah. throw, the, you, you throw the lamp first, right? And then you're going to fight it out. I think, optimally, I think you want to throw regen burst first because it, it has a shorter cooldown because... There's a pretty good chance with Regen Burst that you're going to be able to force her away from you already, in which case then you save Lamp, right? And then you walk back to the fight and you Regen Burst. I think, I think yeah. the issue, though, is, like, attack, right? Like, uh, if I'm below, like, 100, right, which is when she engaged, right? If mm -hmm. I get virused, um, I think Regen Burst first only does, like, what, like, 70? It's when you're below 50%, it's 100 plus 50, right, unless they patched it recently? Yeah, I, I, it just feels like the plus 50 is almost negated because of the, the virus, right? It just kind of like ticks about the same. Yep, right? yep. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that's that's fair. Um, it, it's tough, like, since I haven't played this matchup enough to, like, have a good feel, it's a uh, regen burst they get, get, did get nerfed. It's down to 80 now, so it's 40, 80 instead of 50, 100. So, yeah, it's basically going to gonna cancel out the virus. So I, I understand this. I think that optimally, like, the summer's really, really close to you. Like, if she was this far away, maybe you could get away from it. But this close, I think it's fair to th throw lamp here. Um, but, so you fight that out, right? You pop regen burst there. I don't think you needed regen burst at that point in time because now you're actually in good shape, right? She's clearly running away from you. The more is healing you, you're in a lamp, so you're not going to die instantly. So you're at 60, 64-ish when you pop it. I think you probably could have waited and just seen if you can get away without it. Because I'm nervous that there's a fight that's gonna happen here where I need regen burst, which is why I would try to be greedy and save it. But either way, Sombra's gone. As a note here, this is like outside of Baptiste's effective range. So shooting here is not gonna lead to good damage. So you ideally wanna take fights that are a little closer 
versus like Ana doesn't have that damage fall off. So like this is even the Ana being low here, I don't think you can kill her. It would definitely take two bursts with good accuracy to kill her at this range. But you're playing high ground here. Um, obviously, you're very safe other than to the Sombra, but you have no ability to influence the fight. So if you're over here, you could you know be here and maybe try to save somebody. But out here, nothing you can really do. You've lost a bunch of teammates, keeping people alive, and we should talk about weaving. So you know what weaving is, correct? Yeah, yeah. So noting here, right, this is a situation where, okay, she's got a bubble, that's fine. So now I'm putting in damage because most likely this late in the fight, I haven't been tracking the bubbles because I wasn't there. Most likely she has no bubbles right now, which is correct. So she has no bubbles right now. She's four seconds from her next, next bubble. She's pretty, pretty squishy. She's got 300 health and she's got a tank hitbox. I do 75 damage a shot, so I can solo kill her in four bursts or two bursts if I'm like a madman and hitting all, all headshots. But like, there's three heroes doing damage. Like, she very possibly could die right now. So I'm looking, I really want to get like, you know, attack, attack, heal, attack, attack, heal to, to get a really, really good chance of killing her right now. But healing the, the baby diva is obviously not going to help you, right? Then you're trying to go for heal on the Moira. And like, I understand, but like, we're not shooting at all. And that reduces like the impact of BAP enormously because you're only doing half of the weave, right? You're only doing the heal. And as a result, like without the damage pressure, there's not a lot of reason to play BAP because you're just not getting that value. I'm shocked this worked, <laughs> but it was a good jump, right? Good shortcut to take over, but all right. Now Zarya's doing her thing. So we're going to push forwards. Yeah, we can't, like, at this distance, like, there's no way to challenge the Ana, right? There's too much recoil and too much damage fall off. Like, even if you hit her, it's going to do, like, I don't know, like, 10, 10 damage a bullet, 12 damage a bullet. It's not even worth it to shoot at her right now when you are have, like, better things to do. My primary focus here is I want to take an angle where I can force the, the Zarya away. Playing left side is no good because I'm never going to get a lot of opportunities to shoot the Zarya, and I have to force myself to fight the people really, really far away. Instead, I want to take this angle, which keeps the Zarya in my effective range and allows me to weave and push the Zarya back pretty much by myself if needed. That makes sense? Yeah, but she's like at 70 charge. I think that like angle to the right is like within her range, right? That is correct. But that's totally fine because there's no way the Zarya can, can, can fight me here. Because I have five heroes right now. If I stand right here, the Zarya cannot commit to killing me, right? Especially because you regen burst in two seconds. If I if I path to the right here, like the Zarya just does not have enough time to just sit here and just beam me down. And again, even if she is going to kill me, like I can just tuck into the wall and now she can't beam me anymore without stepping forwards here and then out to the right, which is going to result in her dying. So right, yeah. this, this goes down to like understanding the risk. Again, playing outside of her beam range is obviously like the easiest way to never die to her. But on the other hand, it's also reducing what I can possibly do to her as well. My goal right now is not survival because I'm not worried about my survival. I have four, five heroes right now. Where's your fifth hero? Wherever you're... Oh, over here. <laughs> I have four heroes right now fighting one tank who is very extended. Again, like the rest of our team is really, really far away. And my Sombra is about to fight in the back. Like they have three heroes all the way out here. I'm thinking I want to kill the Zarya here. I'm not worried Lazarya killing me. I'm hunting her because she is really, really far up. And I think getting that instinct, and this is where if you play tank at all, you'll you'll also get this read for like when the fight is swinging the other direction. The fight for sure is going to swing in your direction right now because you have a bulk of your heroes all ready to go right here, especially if we're tracking like Bastion Assault Form. Yeah, so for example, Bastion is Assault Form, right? So for example, even if you did this and the Zarya is like, oh, okay, I'm going to commit to kill the BAP right now, the Bastion just pops a soul form and the Zarya dies. Like from the Zarya's perspective, like when she looks at this, there's no way she thinks I can kill anybody here. Do you, do you see that? Like if you were the Zarya right now, do you think anybody here is killable by you, even if you had a hundred charge? Yeah, yeah, it, no, yeah, you're right. Yeah, right? So there's like, there's like no way. She's just farming old charge right now and trying to slow down your team. So if you realize that, that she's not in a position to kill, just apply a ton of pressure to her. Obviously, get the weaves in, the weaving heal in as well. But I want to kill her, either kill her or force her back and then drop her off high ground. Because that will force her team to then rotate. The Ana can't play here. She now needs to play here to save the Zarya, which means we're now clear to move down the main lane and start taking space away from them. Yeah, see, you're playing like really, really, really safe right now. You're also not weaving shots in. Because like, the shots are free. You're going to have to reload your, your, your healing grenades anyway, so the shots are free. If you're worried about healing, again, just do one attack, one heal, which is like 100% healing uptime versus two attacks, one heal, which is like 85% uptime or whatever. 
but Summer's good job in the back. Yep, regen burst. We're gonna drop down. We're gonna go. Reloading. Um, how do you feel about this window? Uh, I can pretty sure. I'm very confident I can keep uh, Bastion alive, and if we can get the pick on Zarya, I think we win the fight, right? I mean, we also know she has ult, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, how do you feel about the window placement? I could have gotten a little bit closer, um, but I was trying to like have all like lane control as well, right? Yep. Um, so. Yeah, I think this is this is okay. I think my first thought here is. I don't think the, the the Zarya is gonna kill us anyway, based on the fact that I have not seen enough of her team and we just got a bunch of picks. So I think her team are still in the process of responding and walking up. So I would window here to try to kill the Zarya quickly if she's out of position. The problem is she's too close to cover. So I can't kill her with the window, number one. Number two is, could we get grabbed? Oh yeah, we could get grabbed. I mean, ideally I wanna stay out of the grab, but if we do get grabbed, I can pop window especially if I'm not in the grab, like let's say the grab's centered on your Bastion, right? And these three get sucked in. If I'm playing right here, I could window myself. Actually, let me, let me draw it. So obviously Zarya right here, right? The main main person that we need to, we need to focus on. Let's say hypothetically, she, she pops grab here, right? And it pulls in one, one, two, three heroes. If I'm playing over here and I window, I can do my attacks on her and then also heal my teammates through the window. But if you put this window out here, there's a risk that you may not necessarily be able to use the window, either because she just retreats away from it or because you're not gonna be able to heal your teammates through it. I don't know for sure, like exactly what is the right play here, but my feel here when I first saw the window was I feel like this window is too far up. Because I, if I'm the tank here, I'm like, okay, cool. You're gonna window, I'm immediately just gonna walk around the corner and I'm gonna make you waste the window. Cause I don't think you can kill me here. I think like even with window, I do not think you can kill me here right now, especially since I'm already popping bubble and I have another bubble. So I just walk away right now. Like you're gonna pop the bubble, but I think the Zarya forcing the fight right now is suicide. Yeah. <laughs> so I think at higher ranks, the Zarya doesn't do this. Like she has plenty of time. Like she has the window right now. She still has her previous bubble still alive and she's got another bubble charge. I think better Zarya's just walk around the corner and use bubble to get away and reset the fight. And then you use ultimate to like not really win a fight, but just like buy a little bit of time. I think her popping grab here is no good. Obviously, like she gets melted immediately, which is makes no sense. But I don't think that the window made a difference because the Bastion's the one who does all the damage. The Bastion does 350 damage a second. Like the Zarya's gonna die here no matter what. <laughs> like the window just kills her slightly faster. Even if the Zarya doesn't die here, like there's nowhere close to enough damage to kill anybody here in Grav. I'm not following your logic because yep. like if the window's bad because um, she can just go around the cover, right? And then she doesn't die to the Bastion because she would just go around the cover, right? So I guess what I'm trying to say here is I don't think window was necessary here. I don't think that the, that the Zarya has a winnable fight in the current situation as of right now, right? So if we look at this, do we think that the that the Zarya can win the fight right now? Maybe. I mean, like you look at it, like there's like a reasonable amount of people. I, I don't think she can win the fight right now, but my I was just trying to eliminate her, right? If mm -hmm. I if it's a bad window because she could just go behind cover, then she wouldn't have died to the Bastion, right? Without Correct. The window, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Right. So I think we're actually aligned here, which is I don't think the Zarya is actually killable here unless she makes a mistake. Can we agree on that? Like, there's no right, reason yeah. to, to believe the Zarya should die here. Like, the Zarya can choose. If the Zarya decides that she doesn't want to die, there's nothing to, that your team could do to kill her right now. Can we agree? Yeah, I mean, that's why I kind of kicked out the window a little bit so yeah. we can get her on the cover, right? Yeah, so there's a question here is, let's say the Zarya decided that she's not taking this fight, which is the correct call, and immediately starts running around the corner. Can we use the window to kill her? Like, because the path she would take is she would immediately go this way and then cross back over with her last bubble and get, get out here, and we presume she'd lit, right? Because the Ana, the Zen, et cetera, are out here. Right, yeah. So... I, I guess, like, that's the part of it, right? Is, like, I just took the risk, right? We have, what, two ults? Mm hmm And she's not diving to, dying to Diva Bomb, right? Correct. And if we can get the pick, then we win the next fight, right? Yes. I agree with the general decision-making here of, like, or your analysis that if we get the pick, you win the next fight. Agreed. 
I think the question here is, is this the right time to pop window? And again, you know, I don't know everything, right? I can't, I certainly can't predict exactly how things are going to play out. My read here from my experience is this window felt too early and not in the right position. If the Zarya was out here, I think this window is fine. I literally, the difference of like five meters, like she's out here, I think this window is fine. I think she gets toasted before she gets the cover. Right here, I think the Zarya can get away too easily, which could negate the value of the window. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think that's fair criticism. Yeah. But I agree that you're like trying to use the ultimate aggressively to try to try to win the fight, and like you saw an what you saw as an opportunity to pick off the tank. It does in fact actually kill the tank. My my counter would simply be I don't think the tank needed to die there. <laughs> the tank could literally just not fought the fight, but you know, people make mistakes. So the net of it is I don't know for sure like what's the right or wrong answer. I'm just noting that in my experience that feels like that window would not like if I was the opposing tank, I would have been totally fine with you throwing that window. I'd be like, yeah, no problem. I'm just gonna avoid it. Oh, this is tough. Yep, Diva's gotta walk forward, make sure to touch the cart. Yeah, we're in good shape. Somber, your Somber is doing a ton of work after throwing his widow for a while. Alright, so you still know the Somber's behind you, but otherwise. We're in good shape, we're moving forwards, caps, points capped. So this is tough because one of you, you guys should not all be clustered on the cart, right? I'm sure, I think you already know that at this point. Yeah. Yeah, two of you need to leave the cart, but the problem is if you leave the cart, the Kiriko teleports off, like you could throw here. So this is a time where like communication might actually be helpful or you just say like, I'll stay cart or something um, in, in, in voice or text could be useful or you could just play it out. But like you could conceivably throw this fight just because the three of you are sitting on cart, which is silly. But I think all of you are feeling the same thing about worried about the overtime. But you eventually leave. All right, Kiriko stays. Okay, good. So we're looking for weaves here, right? We're probably fine unless there's a volley. Especially when you see attacks coming in from Zen, there's no charge volley. So just go in here and be like, attack, heal, attack, heal. Right? And just play nice and safe, but you want to be farming ulti because you never know when you might need to actually need another one. But yeah, the... I, this is definitely where I start panicking. Like, I... We're already in overtime for like a long time, and I I don't I don't want to throw right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And... Sorry, we're gonna say something. No, no, you're good. Sorry. Okay, so let's kind of analyze this fight because I think this fight's actually really interesting because it's it's tricky. First of all, you know the Sombra's here, but your team's bit like has been playing against the Sombra all game, and in my opinion, are actually doing a pretty good job like adapting to her. Like she's not she hasn't been getting value recently. I think that my priority right now is I really need to hold this corner. Because if the Zarya swings, if the Zarya swings out here, we literally have no space. Because then you're gonna have the team coming up and shooting this way, and then they're gonna go up and shoot this way, and then we're all gonna get messed up in this corner. Like that's gonna be really bad for us. So my priority, if I was tank, if I was Baptiste, because Baptiste is really tanky, is I really, really need to be holding this corner and make sure they don't cross. Like I'm not gonna die for it, but I'm gonna make the Zarya work for it for sure. And this is where weaving is important because I want to work the Zarya down low before she gets to me in order to force out as many bubbles as I can. Because once we start compressing into the space, like there's lots of things that can go wrong right now. For example, an EMP uh, could blow up the whole team at this moment in time. But we play it down, right? We all clump together. Again, I think your, your D.Va needs to be playing further up right now. The thing is that they have, if multiple people are responding at least, the Zarya overextends. Yeah, the Zarya is going too early. See, the, the Zarya should not have swung. The, little things make a big difference. The Zarya cannot play here. The Zarya has to play out here because the Ana is still responding right now. So if she plays here, she gets she's just like fine and probably okay because she wants to force the Bastion assault form out early, and she doesn't do that, right? She should have been out here, burning you guys down, trying to get the Bastion to pop assault form like down at the bottom. But now that she popped it so far up, and the, the Bastion knocks himself forwards? Question mark. No, he just, he just jumps forwards. Yeah, and then now they're in big, big trouble. Right, and with EMP going off, I think this is a, a pretty clean fight. The net of it is, I don't think you actually need to do a whole lot here. I think that your team is just in, has a much better composition for the situation. Your EMP gets popped first, and the Zarya goes too early without the Ana being able to pocket, because the Ana is, was dead and was responding late, which means that by the time the Ana gets to the fight, like this fight's over. Like, there's just way too much damage right now on the Zarya. Zarya has to drop. She's never going to get healed again. EMP goes off. Yeah, I don't think you really needed to do a whole lot here. I'm sure it felt like high pressure in the moment, but you're actually in really, really good shape. Your team is much brawlier than theirs are is, and you just kind of run over them. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and I, throw, I think throwing lamp there makes sense, because, like, at that point, just make sure nobody dies, and you're guaranteed to win. Do they have another fight after this? 
Alright, so you regen burst, EMP gets popped. I would feel right now. I just want to watch your. I think your ammo management is something I want to note here. So, at this moment in time, right, throw a heal. I would reload right now, right, again, because you're, you're missing a bunch of heal grenades. I would have reloaded right then. But, regen burst. I hear the Sombra in the back, so I consider, like, once the Diva's dropping like that, she's she's gone. Like, I'm not worried about it. At most, I get one grenade. I would turn right now and be like, okay, what's going on behind me? Because the, the Diva's good. Like, either if the, if the Zarya drops on, on the Diva, the Diva's gonna die anyway. I can't possibly stop, like, Zarya at, at high charge. I can't outheal that anyway. So I would turn and be like, what's going on in my backline? Because I heard the EMP go off. I think that should be your focus right now. Because the Sombra actually gets a pick on your Sombra. Which, you know, in other situations could be problematic. Rotate out here. Lamp ends up being a little late. It's tough to see, though, from this angle. Like, when you needed to throw that. Right? She gets burned down really fast because of Discord. Yeah, I, it's really tough to see that. But you do get the kill there, which is good. Really important time to obviously be weaving. I, I think this is a time where you could think about swinging here. Right? As you, you know, throw a heal grenade, put down window, shot, heal, shot, heal, to try to uh, turn the fight right now. How do you feel about this window? So I was trying to center it down lane as well as, like, enable the Bastion to, like, kind of mm -hmm. put pressure on the Zarya, right? Yep. So, what's for my use more for, like, optimization for the team, right? Yeah. I think this is this is an interesting window to do it this way. It's like the same way symmetric walls are really more, usually more valuable running north south versus west east. I think this window is okay. I would note here is because I think you already felt like you were gonna you were drifting to the right. So when you popped it right, see. So you're already going to the right right now, and you're gonna snap and you're gonna put it there. And I would have thought, hey, I'm actually not gonna use this window if I put it in the middle like this, versus if I run it west-east right now, I don't think the Zarya is gonna be able to run through the window to get us. You know what I mean? I was I mean? worried about her rotating back and this like, not getting any like coverage out of it, right? Like, like this uh, way? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's fair. I, one note is that even if you run it west-east like this, even if she rotates to here, you could just stand here and you could still shoot her. Unless she like literally camps like this spot right there and even then you can like shoot through the gaps. Just a note. I don't know for yeah. sure. Right call, wrong call. I think windows in particular are really, really tough to predict. I, I feel, I like the idea of the north-south one. I feel like I would have popped the west-east one here. Even on seeing the replay and like obviously we can pause and like think about it. I think I still would pop a west-east window right here. Because the Zarya must stay in the spot, you know what I mean? Like, it's overtime, and she has to... There's no way she can run all the way over here and, like, be able to contest. So I think I would pop the window like that. But I don't think your window is necessarily bad, but you can't get any value out of it for a lot of it, which is tricky. But ends up working out. Obviously, with the tank dead, there's no way to actually... for them to win this fight, and you're going to push forward, and you're going to cap, and you're going to win. Okay. So... In summary, um, well, actually, I want to cover the BAP overall. So, do you feel like you played BAP as as well or better than your Ana? Uh, in this, in this like VOD for sure, it was like worse, right? Uh, yep. This isn't like typical for me. I, I think a little bit was just like the, I, I don't know, like stress or something, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's possible, right? You know, you're playing in a different situation. You had a minute and a half left. You came back pretty significantly. I think you were down like 40, 50 meters when you when you switched to BAP. Um, obviously, you know, you're overtime the whole whole way through. Um, I think the biggest note I would have here is simply the 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 weaving. I think is is a is a big, like like single handedly like moves you into masters if you can just get that extra damage in. Like you're a little too heal focused on BAP. And again it's tough because like we're watching this video where you're stressed and maybe not playing normally, but like you're you're losing out on a lot of the possible damage output of BAP. Like you're probably healing, I don't know, 75, 80 percent of what a GM player would, but you're dealing like 30% of the damage that a GM player would. So like that's the the big area of improvement that you can level up in terms of your BAP play. Um, in terms of your general ability usage, I don't think you really missed any. I mean, you missed the, the one save on Kiriko, but that was like really, she like got blown up by the Zen, I think, uh, in that last fight. But in general, I think your regen bursts and lamp were, were on point. Um, 
positioning was generally fine. I would the the single note is when you were on high ground on this side, right? Playing up and away from your team. I don't know if I feel like with Ana, I think this is okay. With Bap, I feel like it was tough for you to get any value and influence the fight from up here, and you were shooting at people like really far outside of your effective range. But you know, obviously, it worked out okay. Okay, thoughts, questions, etc. Uh, yeah, no, no questions. Uh, I I feel like this is really informative. Thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, there's so I mean, obviously, you know, you got me here. Is, is there anything you want to ask me in general about strategy or micro or macro or anything along the lines of that? I, I think you like covered a lot of a lot of like uh, good points, right? Like. Uh, I don't know, like a better like sleep priority, um, better positioning, and less focus on the tank, right? Um, yeah, it was really informative. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you have nothing else, then I will stop the recording. <laughs>